function because we can't see it. Well, we could see it with the parent function, but we didn't do that. Um, we have x squared minus 4 is the graph that is here on your grid. And what we're going to do is we're going to graph a new uh, function called 2x. 2 is inside the parentheses, notice, squared minus 4. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you, this is the original graph that we started with, okay? And now the new graph is the blue one that just came up. What do you notice about the blue graph? It's skinnier, right? So that blue graph looks narrower. So let's at least do that before we graph. We can write that down. How does this graph look different? It looks narrower. I don't know if narrower is actually a word. I don't know. More narrow might be more grammatically correct, but narrower works. So the graph is skinnier. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the table for this graph right here. So you only have to plot a couple points. And I put the points on the table you should plot. Uh, negative 212 isn't going to fit. But you can plot. I would do negative 1.55. So I'll give you a second to plot those. Negative 1, 0. 0, negative 4. 1, 0, and 1.55. Okay, so I want you to plot those for a second. That will make this skinnier blue graph on your paper. And then I'll put it on mine too. But I'll just leave the table up there for a second. At least say half of it and then we can try to figure out what happened up here. I didn't do every point, but it's close enough. All right. Let's see. So I'll get a negative 1.55, negative 1, 0. Good with that one? All right. Do you have any idea what happened with this graph? We'll come back to that in a second. But do you see at all what happened to make the graph narrower? What changed? I think you don't see it yet. The x value is this way. Notice the name of this is horizontal. And what's along the horizontal axis? The x's. So notice that the x's, the, the dots, stayed on the same level that they were at, the same y. The x's look like they came in a little bit. So let's look at this next graph, 1 half x squared minus 4. So when I do this graph here, okay, there's our original graph. Here's the new one. What happened to make the new one? Or what does it look like? It looks fatter, wider, right? So let's plot these new points on the table. This graph is wider. So I want you to graph actually negative 6, 5. Negative 4, 0. So we're doing like the evens. Negative 6, negative 4, negative 2, and 0. And so negative 6, 5. Negative 4, 0. Negative 2, negative 3. 0, negative 4. And then it'll be symmetric on the other side. I'm only doing those because there's some decimals. I don't, we don't need to do the decimals. So. We'll plot those. And we'll do the same thing over here. So let's see. We'll be at negative 6, 5, negative 4, and 0. All right. All right, so again, you probably noticed my graph for this one looks, we said it looked wider. Oh, I forgot to erase the bottom part. Oh, no. Shame on me. All right, so my graph looks wider. And what stayed the same for each of these points? The x's or the y's? The y value, right? The y value of each point didn't change. So the constant, what stayed constant was the y value of each coordinate. The thing that changed <coughs> would be the x value, right? Some came in, some went out. So the x values are the ones that change. And again, that kind of makes sense because we're getting horizontal changes this time and along the horizontal axis are your x values. Now we need to figure out how these change. And this is where the rule, this, I think this is the most challenging rule just because it just isn't intuitive, right? It doesn't make sense with what you expect to happen. So let's go back to this original equation, or the first one we did, 2x in parentheses squared, minus 4. That was the 
skinnier looking graph here, this g of x, the purple one. We said it was narrower. Well, what do you notice? I'm going to look at these two points right here because they're nice whole numbers and easy to see. My original graph had an x value of 2, 2, 0. And my new graph has a point of 1, 0. What do you notice about the x's there? We need to look up here. We had 3, 5, and then this new point was 1.55. What do you notice about the x's? It got half as big. All right, but we had a 2 in our equation. Now, when I look down to the wider graph, it said 1 half x. And look at the points here. This time I went from 2, 0 to 4, 0. And I went from 3, 5 to 6, 5. How did those x values change? They were twice as big, but it had a half on the inside. Does that seem to go together? Like the 2 made it smaller, the half made it bigger. Right? So this is why it's counterintuitive, because our rule that we're going to look at at the bottom here says that for a horizontal stretch and compression, you're going to have a number, a, we're calling it C right now, inside the parentheses. If that number, C, is between 0 and 1, so it's a fraction like 1 half, 1 fourth, or even 2 thirds, a number less than, a fraction less than 1, that's actually called a horizontal stretch. So those fractions, small fractions, make your graph wider. And the graph that gets skinnier, the horizontal compression, it's going to happen when that number is bigger than 1, like 2, 3, or like 5 over 2. Okay, anything that's bigger than 1 actually is making your graph skinnier here. And we're going to talk about when we go to our transformation chart how we know what number it gets bigger and skinnier by. So pull out your chart. Once you do this a few times, it's not so bad. Last two boxes. Bottom one. Then you'll learn all the algebraic transformations. Yes. Yes, I know. You couldn't wait. Ooh, so excited. So again, we have a number inside the parentheses. When I see a 2 in there, 2 is bigger than 1, the absolute value of 2. That means that this is going to be a horizontal compression. Okay. So the number bigger than 1 means you're a compression. Now let's talk about by how much. The value that you compress by is actually the reciprocal of this number. That's what this italicized word say. To find the compression, you take the reciprocal of 2. And what's the reciprocal of 2? 1 half. So this is getting compressed to be half as wide as the original. And then the other one, when I have a 1 third inside my parentheses, that's actually a horizontal stretch. Right, it's the opposite of what you think is going to happen with the one-third. It's a stretch, and we stretch by the reciprocal, which is 3. Right, so that gets 3 times as wide. Now, one like connection to make here is that when we did other things, like we did other transformations that were inside the parentheses, like left and right, right? notice up here for left and right, Remember, those signs were opposite of what you thought, too. The plus sign, you would think it means to the right, but it actually went to the left and vice versa. So it seems that everything that happened inside the parentheses is kind of the opposite of what you expect to happen. Okay, So if you can just remember that, that anything inside the parentheses is the opposite, then you'll be okay. All right, so let's look at the bottom. Let's just list, let's make sure we can look at this and name our transformations. Then we'll do a couple graphs and we'll be done for today. All right, in A, we have a negative out in front. What does that negative do to your graph? Ooh, reflect over the x-axis, good. All right, so this one's going to go reflect over the x-axis. That's the first transformation. And now this is the new one, the 4 
inside. Four is bigger than one, so is it a stretch or a compression? It's a compression, and I'm going to abbreviate here to save some room. We have a horizontal compression by how much? One fourth. Good. So this one's going to get narrower. A fourth is big. And the plus two on the end means? Up two. Okay. All right, now when I look at B, I have a negative inside the parenthesis, which does what to your graph? The negative, we did a quiz on that yesterday. Reflect over, uh-huh. So we reflect over the y-axis. Now two-thirds is less than one. So is that a horizontal stretch or compression? A stretch. How much are you going to stretch this graph by? Three halves. So it gets one and a half times as wide. So three halves is big. Which we're not really going to graph the, uh, like three halves. Kind of thing. We would do like two or three is times as big. And the minus seven means that you go down seven. You're very enthusiastic today, everybody. Oh, yeah. We're, we're getting there. We're almost done. It's almost the weekend, a long weekend, which is a good thing. All right, nine fifths is inside parentheses. So would that be a horizontal stretch or a compression? A horizontal compression by how much? Five ninths. It's a weird fraction, but five ninths. What about the plus three? The plus three is also inside the parentheses. That means left three. And plus eight is up eight. All right, so you're at least seeing how it looks like in an equation now. So let's do a couple graphs. If you were not here yesterday, we did these kind of graphs yesterday, just without the horizontal. So we did multi-step graphing it, combined everything we've learned together, and we said when you graph and when you talk about transformations, you want to make sure you work from left to right. So when we do that, we'll have, let's just start with the minus sign here. So we're going to list all the transformations and then graph them step by step. We'll see how to graph the horizontal changes. So if I have a negative in front, that means that you did what? I reflected over. I know you're all screaming on the inside, the x-axis. Oh my God, it's the x-axis. Yes. Bobby's not even writing this down, so. <laughs> I've had a long day. I've had a long day, too. How do I know that? I can see him. Yeah. I know who does things and who doesn't. All right, so we'll, we have a reflection over the x-axis. One third inside. What does the one third do to your graph? Uh, Times Hor yeah, so it's a horizontal stretch. Make sure you know it's horizontal stretch by three. So this graph's going to get wider. All right, this is going to look a little different than what we've seen before. And then plus four means we're going to move our graph up four. Okay. Now, if I'm reflecting over the x, we have graphed that. Let's take a minute here. And you're just going to take your parent function that's graphed on the first one and flip it upside down. You don't really need me for that graph, so you can go ahead. differently than, oh, that was a nice picture, putting that graph. 
Tail looks a little bit differently than the vertical stretch. Right? So the vertical, the x's stayed the same when we changed the y. This time, the x's changed and the y stayed the same. Now from here, all we have to do for the last step is move everything up four. So take a minute, you can do that last, last one here. I kind of like the horizontal stretches. They're not too hard. It just makes the X's go out a little bit. It's a nice wide grab. However, the next grab gets a little, it's not harder to see. It just kind of really shrinks things in. We good so far? All right. Now the next one, I have parentheses negative 2X, the quantity squared, minus 2. So we start with the negative inside the parentheses. What does that do? Reflect over the y. All right, and then what does the 2 inside do? Is that a stretch or a compression? 2 inside. I'm not a stretch. Remember, it's the opposite of what you think. It's a compression. It's a horizontal compression by how much? Uh, one half. The reciprocal of that. So one half is the amount you're changing by. And a minus two means you go down two. Now when I look at the first one, reflect over the y, is that going to change what my parent function looks like? No. So if you want, you can just skip that graph. Let's go to the second one. Right, the reflecting over the y does not change what your graph looks like. Now if I horizontally compress by one half, just like the first one, the origin, or the vertex at the origin doesn't move. However, let's look at my next point, one, one. I'm changing the x values by half. So where would this new first point be? Instead of 1, 1, the one, first 1 changes. What's half of 1? One? 1 half. So my new point's at 1 half. 1. So it's really squeezed in there. If I go to the next point, 2, 4, and I change the x's by half, where will that point be? One, four. Okay. And lastly, if I'm at three, nine, and I have a horizontal compression, where does that point go? One and a half, 1 1.5, nine. So see how that graph got really, really skinny right there? And the grid's really small too, so it doesn't, doesn't help. All right, then all you have to do is move down. I didn't write the number. We're going to go down two. So once you find your points here, you can go down two. Let's see, 1.57. And grab this. Right. So you see how this is working. It's not too horrible. The next one's going to make you think so. All right, are we okay on this one? We have one more graph to go. One more. Oh, one half out in front. What does the one half in front do? That's a vertical. vertical compression. So this was your quiz today. The first one half right here, that's a vertical compression by half. What about the minus on the inside? Reflect over the y-axis. Okay, and then... What about the two inside the parentheses? Ooh, we didn't, it's not plus or minus. It's a horizontal, it's a horizontal what? Compression. compression. Because two is bigger than one. So I have a horizontal compression by how much? One by half. So this graph is being vertically compressed by half. So it's getting like stouter. Like short and stout because you heard like, like a teapot. So it's getting shorter. And it's getting narrower, all by half. Now I have that song stuck in your head, I'm sorry. It's stuck in my not too. So let's grab our last one. Vertically compressing changes the y values here. Okay, so my origin stays the same. Instead of being at the point 1, 1, the y value goes to half. So it's 1, 1, half on either side. We've done this one before. We did this yesterday. Instead of the point two four, where would you be? 
two, two. Three, one, four, four point five. And what's one more point that can fit on there? Instead of four sixteen, you'd be at four eight. All right. All right, the y-axis, does it change my graph? No, so let's skip it. Let's go to the last one. Horizontal compression now. So I'm taking this already shorter graph, and I'm going to <coughs> change it. Now, I'm not even going to have you do all the points here, because we'll get a lot of decimals. We'll do a couple, but 0, 0 stays the same. And I'll do the first point, or actually, let's skip to the 2, 2. Let's just do the nice numbers, 2, 2. If I change 2, 2 by half of the x, where would that point now be? 1, 2. Now I'm at 1, 2. Right, I skipped the first point. And I'm going to go out to 4, 8. Because again, that's just a nicer point to deal with here. Where would that 4, 8 now go? 2, 8. So it's now skinnier, and the y values are closer. Well, actually, I want to do one more with you, really. Sure. Yeah. On the practice. I'm not making you do anything for homework. We're going to get more practice with this next week. Um, let's look at the last page of homework, very back in your packet. Okay? Now, I just want to show you these graphs really quick here, because this way we can visually see, like, the change. So if we can identify if it's a horizontal stretch or compression. So it's very similar to how we identified vertical stretch and compression. With our parent function, you know you went out one, up one. That's the rule. Well, here, if I look at this first graph, it looks like I go out a half up one, or out one up four, instead of out two up four. So this time, to find the horizontal change, instead of looking at how far up or down you go from the vertex, you're looking at how far out you go. Okay, does that make sense? So we won't list all the transformations, but was this a horizontal stretch or a compression? A compression. So this is a horizontal compression, and how much is it by? One half. One half. Good. Okay, and then this also went down how many? Here. We'll write the equation. Down three. So if I'm writing the equation here, if I have a horizontal compression, here's the hard part. How do I write that in my equation? A 2 inside the parentheses, so it'll be 2x, the whole thing squared, and then you would do your down 3. Okay. Now you can see that over here too, on this purple graph, I had to go out 1, 2, 3, out 4 before I went to my down 1. So that's a horizontal stretch, and how much is that stretching by out y? By four, okay. Then it reflected, right? It reflected over the x-axis. And what was the last transformation here? Uh, Up how many? Five. Five. All right. So how would we write this equation? Y equals. Where does the reflection go? Front, Front the negative. And how do I write that I have a horizontal stretch by four? One fourth x, and then you do the square on the outside, plus five. All right, does that, I mean, I know it's, it's the trickiest one. It takes us practice.